As a bow maker, I like to try out new materials and new techniques and new tools, anything new to help me grow my craft of bow making. And that's what we're doing today. I've got a tie and an oak palette. We're gonna see if we can make a bow out of it. We're starting a new series to see if we can make bows out of weird things like ties and oak palettes. I think we should call it Will It Bow. Finding out that the biggest challenge with making a bow out of this reclaimed pallet wood is avoiding the defects in the wood. There's the nail holes to go around and also a bunch of knots to go around. And finding an area that's thick enough to make a bow is difficult, but on this one piece of pallet wood, I think I figured it out. This is just one piece of wood, but I've cut it down into two strips about an inch and a half wide, maybe a little shorter. But if I put these together, it's long enough for a bow. So what I need to do next is figure out a way to splice these together and I'll glue those together and then I'll probably glue a handle on it and then we'll be able to glue the tie on it and then we'll be able to see if this random pieces of wood can turn into a bow. Tie is only 60 inches long, so our option is to only make a 60 inch bow or we can make a bow that's a little longer with static limb tips. Let's go for it. Let's go for a bow with static limb tips and that'll allow me to make a longer bow, but all the working limb will have the tie on it as a bow backing. Yeah, let's do this. I just sprayed myself.
It's time to take this hunk of wood and thin it down and get our bow backing on. Hey guys, I gotta interrupt real quick to talk to two of you specifically, Dale. Thank you so much, this looks awesome. He made this out of Osage Orange for me and it holds bow strings or my tillering string. It fits perfectly, it's awesome. I really do appreciate it and thanks for all your encouragement. Heartland Outdoor Living is his YouTube channel. If you wanna check him out, him and his wife do some awesome things, traditional archery. Secondly, Randy, your bowstring's on your way. I think since it was kind of over the Christmas time, it delayed a little bit, but it should arrive in the next two days, so be looking out for that. And we'll go back to the bow build. Okay, I should be able to do six inches on either side and that should allow the tie hopefully be able to fit over the rest of the length of the bow. Yeah, it looks like it will. So the six outer inches on either side is gonna be static, and then we have a 10 inch handle that's gonna be a static. So that's 22 inches of this bow that's not gonna be bending, but that still leaves us plenty of limbs that is gonna be bending, that this tie is gonna act as a bow backing to keep the back from cracking, hopefully. We already have some cracks in the back of the bow, just from the wood drying and being weathered outside. That's why a bow backing I figured would be necessary to do a bow build like this, but I don't know if it's gonna work. So we are going to find out. So the bow's looking good, I guess. There's cracks in one end of the static limb. Hopefully that's not a big problem. There's also a nail hole through the side of this limb. I'm going to treat it like I would a knot and leave it and put the backing over it and squirt some glue in there and hopefully that's not a weak point. It's mid limb, so yeah, we'll just have to see. I'm kind of skeptical, but I'm gonna try as hard as I can to make this bow work. It's getting late tonight, but I really need to get this bow backing on before the night's up. So we're gonna jump into the tie and figure out how we can put that on the back of this bow. In a normal case, I might go ahead and take down more of the belly of the limb so that it would start to bend slowly. But right now, I'm gonna just put this backing on. Then I'll be able to treat it like a self bow from then on. So I started this and I realized that I don't have anything to wrap the tie with and I need something breathable because glue only dries if it can be exposed to air. So what I came up with <laughs> is the inside of the tie, whatever cotton piece of thing that is, and then I cut some strips off the side of the tie and I'll use that to wrap uh, this tie down as the bow backing and hopefully that'll be enough to get me by for this particular application. I'm not gonna try to make a particularly strong bow. I'm just gonna, I'm trying to make a bow. I'm trying to test the limits of materials because you can't learn unless you break one every now and again. So why not break it on zero consequence material? Wow, this pallet board is soaking up so much glue. It's drier than something really dry. I normally do too much glue, so we'll leave it at that. And we'll start laying this out. Oh yeah, that glue's helping it stay in place. That's awesome. Well, that's as good as I'm gonna get it tonight. We'll check back on this in about three, two, one. Oh yes, I'm back with some massive excitement because this is dry. It's looking really good. And we're getting to the point like this, it's time. I can make an entire bow out of this. I don't have to let glue dry anymore. So we're gonna get right into this, thin down the sides, thin down the handle, start tillering this, and we're gonna have a bow before you know it. Let's go.
35 pounds at 22 inches. The goal is to end right about 35 pounds at 30 inches. So we're just gonna remove wood and make this tiller perfect. Okay, so we've got a little situation. I don't think this is oak at all. I think this is actually pine or some kind of white wood. If you watch my poplar bow video, this wood is just as soft as that, if not even softer. So what I didn't account for that is hinging. So I was just attacking this wood hard. And of course, right where the little nail hole is half cut through, the bow started to hinge. So I've been having to take off a ton and a ton of wood to recorrect where that hinge started to happen so that the bow wouldn't break right there. So the bow is starting to bend evenly, but we're gonna end with a really, really weak bow probably. So that's partially my fault, and I should have realized how soft this wood is as I started to work on it. There's no way this is, this is oak. It's some kind of white, soft wood, and it really just looks like pine to me. In saying all of that, it's not ruined. We can still make a bow that shoots. We can make it look cool. So not all is lost. I think we can still get a shooting bow out of this, but I'm gonna slow down even more now so that I do not create hinges. It's something you gotta be careful with with white wood is that it will hinge really easily and the belly of the wood will actually start to stack upon each other and you'll see these little wrinkles in the belly of the wood and when you see those wrinkles you know you're you're in trouble. So I stopped there, removed a ton of wood on both sides and now we can continue tillering now that I got the hinge out. The worst thing you can do if you have a hinge is pull extra far past that hinge and keep drawing it to heavy poundage. That'll just ruin the bow. It'll most likely just break and if it doesn't break you're never going to get that hinge out but I think I've got it pretty even now. Just a little bit of go, this almost looked like an L, so I'm happy about that. Let's continue on this bow. <sighs> Made me nervous, but I think we can still get something shooting out of this. I hopefully this pallet will bow. So here it is, a Mogulbet style longbow made out of a pallet that's right behind me. Goes to show you, you can make a bow out of nearly everything. So far, I would say that the workability on a scale of one to 10 is probably like at a two or a three. Soft woods are not very workable for bows. The first reason is removing a little bit of wood makes a huge difference. And so that's really easy to create hinges. Secondly, because it's softwood, it seems to be less consistent. So it may have a good tiller, but in a week the tiller might be completely off. And that's what happened with a poplar bow. After a week of shooting it, the tiller started to change a little bit. And I had to take some more wood off to make that tiller good again. So as far as workability, I give it a three. As far as durability, it's a softwood. I give it a two, probably. But as the bow backing goes, I would use a tie on any bow and I think that durability on the tie is gonna be very good for you. The problem with this particular bow is the compression, not the tension on the back of the bow. The back of the bow is good. It's the belly of the bow that this wood is really bad under that compression. So the tie, I would give a seven for durability for the pallet. Since it's a light wood pallet, I would give it a three. I imagine an oak wood pallet would be much higher than that. And as far as speed goes, let's test that right now.
Looks like it's averaging around 114 feet per second. For a 25 pound bow, that's actually not too bad. As far as shootability goes, it is smooth. And the mobile vest style, I like these bows. And enjoyment of shooting this bow. I have to give it a seven. That's really fun. This will be a great bow for beginners. Anybody visiting my shop who's never shot a bow, hand them this one and man, they can just go to town and get their form down with a 25 pound bow before you move up. There's a place for it. This gives us a total KSA score of 18 out of 40. Hey guys, we turned a pallet and an old tie into a bow and that's pretty cool. You don't need anything special to make bows and it's a great starting point to grab what you've got and try to make a bow. This is the first installment of this series, Will It Bow? If you have any suggestions or ideas of what you would like me to make a bow out of, tell me any type of material, any type of backing, any type of wood, metal, I don't know, anything you can think of that'll make a bow, household objects, or just anything you're curious about, let me know and we'll see if we can make it bow. So far we're one for one, not the best bow, but it's a good bow. And if you need a bow string, Kramerams.com is where we're selling them. You guys are awesome. Stay positive. Work on a bow. Have some fun. Smile. You know, do all those good things. We'll see you later.